This video is sponsored by Amino. Amino is an app that powers over a million different communities, at least one in every interest in the world. That includes game development. Amino's game development community is the ultimate place to connect with other game developers and aspiring game developers alike to discuss tips, share content, and meet people from around the world who share your interest. On Amino, you have a bunch of different options for social interaction. If you want to ask the community a question, create a quiz, start a poll, submit a wiki entry or a blog post, you can do that and much more on Amino. Add me on Amino today and let me know which tutorials you like the most and what you want to see in the future. Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unity 3D tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to actually move our enemy around. So we're going to set up a system where um, depending on the random amount of time that you set, your character will change directions and follow the train and then switch directions again. So more in the future we'll add on to the enemy and make it so they can attack the player and do different things like that. Or if you want to set up different paths that they follow to go around areas, we'll also set up that. But for this one, we're just going to make our enemy randomly wander. So what we want to do first is just jump into our enemy stats script. And we're going to be adding three new variables to this. So we're going to be checking in combat, wander time, and movement speed. I don't think right now we really need in combat. But if you're setting up a system where your enemy can go into combat, you'll want to use that to make sure that the wander code is not being called while they're in combat. So we'll add that later when we actually set up the combat system. And the wander time is going to be the amount of time that you want your enemy to wander before they change directions. And movement speed is just the speed at which the enemy is moving. So we're going to be adding this line of code to our update function. So we're going to be checking if our enemy is not dead, then we want them to randomly wander. So with wander time, whatever you set this to, it's going to count down. And once it gets down to zero, they'll change the direction of the enemy itself. And it'll start wandering in a different direction. So while the wander time is greater, we want to make the enemy move in the direction that they're facing. So we're going to be using transform.translate and we're going to be moving them forward by whatever our movement speed is set to. And then we want our wander time to count down by time.delta time, so whatever time we're using in game. And so once wander time is no longer greater than zero and it hits zero or it goes below, we want to change the wander time to a random amount and then we want our enemy to change their wander direction. So you can change this to change direction or wander or whatever, but I'm just gonna set this up to this for now. Um, we'll probably change this up a bit. We might add in a state machine for our enemy um, that'll just keep track of the different actions that the enemy is doing. So right now we just have, we'll just have this basic setup for now, just for testing this. So when wander time gets below, yeah, we'll just um, change the wander time and then start wandering. And we're going to want to set up a function for our wander script. And this is going to change the angle, so the rotation of our enemy. And so it'll pick a random rotation that we between 0 and 360. So it'll randomly spin around to a different direction. And this code will make sure that they keep moving in that change direction. And that's pretty much all we need for this script for now. Um, it's a pretty basic one. But all we need to do now is go into our enemy. And we'll scroll down. And you're going to want to change the movement speed. And the wander time. Just the base wander time. So at the beginning we can just set it to something like 8 seconds or maybe even 5. Just so we can see it sooner than later. And another thing that we want to do here. I'm just going to jump into the game and show you guys real quick. Um, you'll probably see the issue already that we run into, that they're floating above the terrain. But he can still change directions and he'll continue floating. And he'll probably collide through the terrain and go under it. So one thing we need to do is go into our rigid body. And we want to use gravity so our, um, our enemy can actually fall to the ground. And we'll change the Y constraint so they can actually fall onto the ground. And we'll go try this in-game again and see what happens. 
So if we see now, um, our enemy actually follows the terrain and they don't go through it. And we'll just watch him tra change different directions. We can actually select him and just see the wander time actually counting down. So I set it between um, five and 15 seconds. You could also change the movement speed to be randomized as well if you wanted to. But you see that they change their movement direction. And you're gonna see they f this character floats a little bit above the ground. That's just the collision box that's around the, uh, the enemy. If you had a smaller collision box or if you're using a, um, what's it called? Let's see, like a capsule, you could, um, it'll be a lot more smoother going up and down the train. So yeah, that's a basic way to set up enemy wandering movement. So yeah, in the future, we're going to make it so these enemies can actually path if you want them to. Because usually in games, there's enemies that are randomly walking around on the train. There's enemies that follow a certain path. And then we could also make it so there's... Um, random points throughout the train and maybe we want our enemy to wander to this wander to this far point or wander over here or over there we could have a giant list and randomly select points that we want the enemy to wander to maybe if you're trying to create a uh, like a boss enemy that wanders around the zone randomly um, that's a good thing to implement so people won't really know where that rear enemy is um, spawned at or walking towards so yeah so there's a lot of different things we could do with these enemies, and I'll try covering more of that in the future, so stay tuned.